Are you looking to turn your too crisp, way too sharp images into fluffy, cuddly, soft, grainy film-like photos? Boy, do I have the answer for you. Wink. I've been shooting film for around 15 years um, as a hobby and, and for fun. I like doing it and sometimes for work, but it's gotten less accessible over the last few years. So much so that digicams have come back around. They're the hot new thing. People are scrambling to get their hands on those CCD sensors rummaging around in their parents' drawers and, and boxes in the attic to find those, those early 2000s gems. And for over a decade, pretty much since Instagram filters, uh, we've been looking for you know, clean images, how to model them up and make it something, make it interesting, make it quirky, make it different, I guess. And, and then there was Visco. Visco uh, changed the game with their filters and their, their, their packs, film emulator packs, most of which we would just click through mindlessly until we found the one that felt right. But if everyone's a Visco girl, is no one a Visco girl? <laughs> Enter Dehancer. So Dehancer reached out to me to uh, test out their plugin for Lightroom and Photoshop. They want me to give an honest opinion on my experience. So that's, that's what I'm here to do. They gave me a month free in exchange I make this video. I have spent the last month thinking about using it, researching it, watching other people's videos. And today we're going to take a look a little bit at how it works. Well, let's go. <laughs> so let's start out with some pros. So it does have some presets, right? Of course, it's like film emulation. So it, it, it's got some pre-built filters in here based off of some film stocks, some that have expired and they'll say expired 2013. Very specific. It also remembers your last edit. So if you are trying to apply one look to a large batch of photos, you'll have to do them one at a time but uh, it will remember the last one that you did. <laughs> so going with Fujichrome Velvia 50, um, you can see the, the halation around the, the lit up sign here. Um, it's got some bloom as well. Um, if we see these yellow lights over here, I think the powerhouse behind this plugin is, is that you can fine tune everything from your bloom to halation, film grain, uh, and really dial it into a look that you do want in a realistic way that emulates film, which is, I guess, the point. Wow. There you go, the bloomiest of blooms. Is this my style? Is this my new style? <laughs> very cool. And that's about the end of what this plugin does very well is it looks like film. And I think if you're if you're looking to emulate film, if you're used to certain film stocks, then you can probably emulate it with the help of this app. Or if you're going for a certain look and really want to dial it in, then Dehancer might be really good for you. However, that's about the end of, of what this plugin is really good at. I found a lot of issues with it as well. First being that Control Z doesn't work to undo. I have to go over and click this button until I think I remember where I'm at. Um, I can restore the last use setting. Again, we talked about that, which is kind of neat. Or I can reset everything back to default. Although Control Z doesn't work, they do have these two buttons that you can go up and click. I'm just a creature of habit, I guess. The other way that you can go back to an original status is if you've moved a slider, if you double click on that little slider head, it'll go back to what it was set at. Um, either for the preset or back to default. So along with Control Z not undoing things, um, simple things like clicking on the photo to zoom in um, or, or hitting Z also would, would get you back there. Being a plugin for Lightroom, I, I figured that some other shortcuts might work as well. Things like Z zooming in or Control Plus also doesn't zoom in. Um, I did find out eventually that if you just scroll over the picture, it will zoom in. But little things like that just aren't as intuitive for me, uh, just because I've been using Lightroom and Photoshop for so long that uh, it becomes second nature. And if it's like 
a pseudo version of Lightroom, then um, I might expect it to do one thing and it, and it doesn't. However, uh, Dehancer is also for Capture One, which I don't use, but DaVinci, uh, Premiere. And so, so it has a lot of applications depending on which version you've downloaded. It's just, I feel like it should sort of reflect the app that you are plugging it into. So once you get everything dialed in, uh, you just hit OK and it takes you back to Lightroom, but it doesn't select the photo that you just edited. So um, it kind of throws you into nowhere and then you have to go and search for your edit that you just made, which mine, let's see. Oh, right. It doesn't transfer over your your star rating. So if you had filtered to all five five star photos, it gives it no no rating. And here it is. OK. I'm gonna give it a five star. There we go. So now we have the um, the original here, an edit that I did previously, and then you also have the edit from Dehancer. Now, if we go into develop settings, we can see that there is, is, is no previous edits here. Um, and if I wanted to go back and say, edit this in Dehancer Lightroom, I can say, edit the original and then it makes another copy, opens it back up in Dehancer, and then puts that edit on it again. So essentially what's happening is that Dehancer duplicates the photo and then all the edits are baked into it. So you can't adjust anything after the fact. If I wanted to do another edit, I guess I would go back to this photo and say edit in Dehancer. And uh, it would put your last edit on there. So maybe that was their workaround was just saying, hey, if if we if we have it open up and put the same thing on, then if you messed up, then you can go back and just tweak the settings again. However, let's say it's five months later and I'm like, you know what? I overdid it. <laughs> I over I overdid it on uh, on this shot. The highlights are all blown out. It looks a little funky. I don't like it anymore. Well, good luck. Now, if you're just going off of one of their presets, I guess that's fine. You can just put the preset on and make your adjustments as you want. For me, I like um, non-destructive edits. And although it does make it on a copy, it's not something I can just go back to in a history of, of, of edits. So I find that kind of annoying, especially when my photo library for this year is already at 11,000 photos. So I've already mentioned the fact that you can't batch edit. Like if I wanted to edit multiple of these images at the same time or put the same presets on them, there's no way to do it. And because it bakes in the edit, I can't from Lightroom say like, yeah, sync up the settings or whatever. Yeah, sync settings. And I can't copy that edit onto here. I could just open it up in Dehancer, wait for the plugin to load, then hit done. But then I'm, I'm also, it's okay, I'm into Hanser and it's put the edit on, but it doesn't look the same because they're different photographs and they are taking in different, taken in different lighting and everything is different about the photos. Well, there's, there's not much I can do about it other than now I have to go in and tweak each photo anyways. So it's a little frustrating there. Add to the fact that on photos that I've taken, say in a studio, like portraits, I already have a workflow that I've used for a long time. So Let's say with this photo here, I had complete control over the light. It is a little dark, um, but I would go in and make my normal adjustments and then be like, okay, well, I need to touch things up like um, this line on the backdrop. Maybe there's some other thing on the clothes, like a speck of dust or something. Well, I would, I would open this up in Photoshop. I would make my edits. Um, it would duplicate that file, but it's okay because I can go back and edit it if I need to. Um, and then I would do my, my, my color adjustments and make all those edits on that new file um, that I had touched up in Photoshop. So I don't know. It doesn't seem to make much sense. It seems like a tertiary um, editing process where I'd be like, okay, I've done all that. Now let me open up this third thing, make another copy, and... Um, I hope, hope that I like the edit that it does. <laughs> so I, I don't feel like this replaces any of my workflow that I already have. I already have some presets that I've made that, that work for me, that I like. Um, and 
can adjust pretty easily in Lightroom or Photoshop. And then adding something to that process seems almost unnecessary uh, for where I'm at. But if you don't have the same workflow as me, then, then maybe this would be great for you. And if um, those little micro adjustments that you can do to things like the halation or the bloom um, are very important, then yeah, this seems like a great solution for that. Um, I, I can't really do anything about adding halations or bloom in, uh, in Lightroom. This seems like an easy way with sliders that you can accomplish those goals. And the last sort of negative that I see about Dehancer is that it's kind of expensive. Uh, for the Lightroom and Photoshop edition, it's $199 on top of something that you already pay a subscription for. Can accomplish the same things, might be a little bit harder without the little sliders. So if you are somebody that uses uh, Lightroom and Photoshop, then I would say look up some tutorials on Photoshop about how to enhance bloom. I don't know about halations. I, I'm sure you could figure that out as well. It's not anything I've really like searched for. Uh, just like this app started, it, it started with some Photoshop actions uh, that people liked. And so they've made Dehancer, which is great for people who, who don't want to learn Photoshop and just want a, a, a simpler, quicker workflow, maybe simpler to understand with the, the sliders and, and whatnot. So. Anyways, that's uh, Dehancer. Uh, it, it emulates film very well and will really uh, dehance your your photos. Anyways, that's my review on Dehancer. I hope it was informative enough. Try to keep it a little bit to the point. If you want to learn more about Dehancer, you can check out their website. Um, I also might do a, a little bit longer video of, of the editing workflow in Lightroom and Photoshop and Dehancer. Um, if you'd like to see that, uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, otherwise, feel free to like and subscribe. I'm gonna hopefully be making some more videos soon. <laughs> more like photo walkabouts, uh, that sort of thing. Got a lot of footage. I just need to do something with it, huh? Anyways, thanks so much. Uh, talk, talk to you later. Okay, bye.